Hello, what's up everyone, Jaiko here, and today I want to make a video, uh, just my thoughts video on House of Ashes. As any of you know, uh, House of Ashes is the third uh, game in Supermassive Games Anthropology series, and, you know, I have to say, this game um, is pretty darn good. Um, cutting to the chase, you know, I would give House of Ashes an 8.5 out of 10. Falls a little short on Until Dawn, which is, you know, the first game, the super massive game that you know, that they made, and it was amazing. Uh, I personally give Until Dawn a 9 out of 10. So, again, they fall a little short, but um, hey, it's still pretty good in my books. Uh, now, before I delve into, to, you know, more of my thoughts, you know, just be warned that, of course, there's going to be some spoilers around. I myself might not be saying any spoilers, but, you know, I'm sure the clips that's showing on your screen right now you know, may have some spoilers, right? For. You know, a game that's solely driven by story and narrative, I mean, that's bound to happen. So, hey, you've been warned, so don't send any lawyers over at me. Now, with that out of the way, uh, let's talk about this game. So, I think the first thing that I uh, that really stood out amongst all the previous two games, which is Man of Medan, Little Hope, is that the, the script was pasted very, very well. Right. So when you start playing this game, you'll start to have like, you know, obviously you have very suspenseful scenes and the suspense by golly is like top notch. Right. It's like, you know, it's like you're chasing by something or something in all the dark. You're not sure what the fuck is happening. And then at the end of every suspense scene, it always comes to a conclusion. And once the conclusion is made, it is very clear to the player and then suddenly Everything just slows down. All right, let's get back to the lore. Let's read some of those documents. Like, what the fuck is happening here? You know, let's talk about. Oh, and here's one of the great things about this game: there is surprisingly a lot of character development. I felt like this was something that they were trying to do ever since, um, you know, Men of Medan and even Little Hope. But I think it is this one that they really nailed it. Right, throughout this entire House of Ashes. There is a lot of different types of character development, a little, uh, lots of different types of uh, interaction between characters. So, for example, right here in this scene, right, you see our good old buddy Jason and Nick. You know, they're showing a bit of their trust, their love. You know, what it means to be in a bromance relationship in the Marine Corps. You know, and I thought that was pretty interesting. It's not something that, like, you know, you would, uh, you would see in, like, you know. Any kind of normal horror suspense movie. Then we also have Jason and Salim, uh, which you see on the screen right now. You know, it's kind of, it's it's a cool development here. It's like, you know, Jason is kind of like putting down his guard. You know, he always have crowned it as, uh, you know, Salim as his enemy because they're on the opposite side of the uh, of the war. And now look, like I mean, he's able to, you know, get past that shit, right? Like just. Put it down, come to accept, uh, you know, Salim as a human being and, you know, kind of embrace and accept him as a friend, at least emotionally anyway. Uh, well, at least in my playthrough, they became friends. Um, I'm sure, you know, there's different branches that they become sworn enemies. But whatever your playthrough is, let me know. But uh, yeah, that's another type of, you know, character development they have in this game. Then, of course, you know, how can you not have a little bit of romance drama mixing in there you know sprinkle throughout the entire series you know for example you know eric and uh ah, what's her name is it rachel yeah i think it's rachel so eric and rachel you know they have their own little repair you know between their marriage you know again great character development is like you know it's like just speaking about the different types there is right now it's almost like there's plenty of different types of you know, character development and plot, you know, all jumbled in into this once, you know, giant series. And to a certain degree, you know, I myself is very happy that it seems like Supermassive Game has finally figured out the formula, right? I, it seems like they finally have gone their mojo back, so to speak, right? Like, I'll be very honest, I was not very impressed in their previous two games. Uh, again, just the name Metal Man of Medan and also like Little Hope. You know, like let, let's talk a little bit about those games for a second here. Uh, so for example, Man of Medan, they they have a really big problem 
when it comes to narrating the story and really getting into the character development, right? They were just lacking meat in general, right? The story, in a way, it doesn't really make sense, or it was, you know, the plot twist wasn't really that surprising. You know, in character development, even though it felt like there was a lot of symbolism there and that each character wants to become better, ultimately, it doesn't really show on screen. And I guess that's what a lot of players or even viewers like myself is trying to wait for, right? Yeah, it might be cheesy, but it'll be nice to see these characters have their own internal monologue and like, you know, talk, to, share their feelings in the middle of the, you know, whatever shithole that they've been put into. You know, I feel like, you know, Man of Medan was really missing the story and narrative part about it. And when it comes to Little Hope, uh, oh, wait, by the way, I did not record my own personal playthrough of Little Hope. I did borrow it from, you know, our dear friend at MK Ice and Fire. Uh, you can see that. Uh, I'll, I'll, link their, uh, I'll link their channel in the description below. But anyhow, my point being is I just want to showcase to you this scene. And the problem I have with Little Hope was that the cutscene characters doesn't really match up with how I play the character. Right, like so. For example, when I was playing, you know, as this character on the screen right now, Angela, I played her to be a nice person. Right? Okay. Look, boo hoo. We're all lost in the middle of nowhere. You know, maybe we should, you know, be nice to each other, make the best out of it. You know, and just play nice. But guess what? When I swapped over and I start playing as a, uh, um, uh, this other character. Crap. What is his name? I don't even remember. But but yeah, when I was playing as, you know, this guy on the screen, the main character, uh, Andrew, there you go. Um, and when I was having this conversation with Angela, the problem is Angela was a complete, absolute bitch in that conversation. And it doesn't really align with, you know, when I played Angela, when I had control over her. Right? And that, I don't know, it just bothers me so much. And the same thing happens throughout... You know, I would say almost the entire Little Hope series. It's like, you know, there's always this disconnect between like, you know, the how the character acts versus how I act when I get to control them, right? And that's my biggest pet peeve with that game. And here, let's dive into actual gameplay of the game. And I think what House of Ashton did really, really, really freaking well is that they purposely made certain QTE events that you're meant to fail, right? There are certain, you know, response that you're meant to say nothing, right? Just remain silent. It's better that way, right? Because, you know, in, in the previous games, you know, even any heavily story driven, you know, where you can pick your own dialogue, um, you know, most of the time you just try to select the most you know, nicest comment. Right, and every time when some QTE event pops up, you just smash that button. Right, you don't really put too much thought into it because you know, ninety nine point nine percent of the time, it, if you succeed on the QTE, then it's a good outcome. But in House of Ashes, they are not scared to break that tradition. Right, it, it really makes you, you know, rethink if you should really succeed on this QTE or if this is really the right decision that you want to go with and um no and I think this is a brilliant addition right it, it you know personally for me when I was playing a lot of the you know all the uh, until dawn man of me dan little hope games I pay really little to the actual action that's happening right hey man when hey when shit is coming after you you want to just succeed your QT, you don't care what happens on screen, but now, now, now that with the idea that not every QT you want to succeed, hey, guess what? I should pay attention to the screen. I should know what my character is trying to do. Now, I think that's a brilliant thing that they have done here. Now, speaking on you know QTE and decision making, you know I think one thing that House of Ashes had done really really freaking well and even better than until dawn is that you know whatever decision or key decisions that you make will impact your character if they like or dislike you 
And they made it very explicitly like, oh, what was the decision previously that made this character think and feel this way? And I think that's done really, really darn well. Because I found that many times in the other games, again, even until Dawn, I'm awfully confused and baffled. Hey, why is this character hating me? Or why is this character liking me so much? I am not sure. And, you know, in House of Ashes, they draw the connection very, very clear. And I, as a player, you know, do enjoy that, right? Like now it's like, oh, fuck, next time I can do something different and try out what's the response from each character. And I feel like that's all the main points I really want to share, right? I mean, again, you know, I personally really love this game. I love the Supermassive uh, series. I hope they keep on making them, you know, for as long as they can, really, right? And I love to see that they finally seem to have gotten their formula down. House of Ashes, they nailed it. Um, story was good. Plot twist was great. Narrative was well-paced. Again, I give it like an 8.5 out of 10. And um, you know what? And overall, I think I'm more happy that Supermassive Game finally managed to get their mojo back. Right? It seems like, you know, all the writers and all the developers have finally found the right amount of pacing and formula for this type of game. Then with that, um, thank you so much for watching. If you do like my uh, videos and thoughts, please do uh, consider subscribing. Leave a comment below. What do you think about this game? Did you guys manage to survive with all the characters? Let me know. And with that, I uh, hope to see you guys soon again. See ya.